Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A crash ends with a motorcyclist killed. The charges a suspect now faces in this person's death. A woman is killed by sharks on a Royal Caribbean cruise in the Bahamas. What police are saying about how she was attacked. Outside with live cam, we'll take mid 70s versus upper 70s or lower 80s. Mike Osterhage is standing by with your midweek forecast. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, September 7th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, not too bad at 75 degrees. It felt a little less humid this morning. I, I think this is one of those days because of the holiday on Monday. Everybody's going to be still off by a day. Mm -hmm. So again, it is Wednesday. Mike is here. Oh, and, yeah. and Mike, I was, of course, out in the field yesterday. I have no idea what's happening weather-wise. Yeah, yeah. First of all, back to what you were saying about the day. I'm like, yeah, yeah. We, no, Thursday. Yeah, it's Wednesday. So Wednesday. anyway, uh, we have a better chance of rain today. So we had a couple of showers around yesterday. Today is going to be a 30% chance for a couple of uh, showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon. As you can see, we do have some clouds starting off this morning and we'll keep a few of them around obviously throughout the day. 76 is the temperature out there. So these numbers are up ever so slightly, but like Steph was talking about, yeah, dew points are down a hair compared to yesterday. 73s from Port SA over toward uh, New Braunfels, Pleasanton, and then even some upper 60s in portions of the hill country. So yes, it is humid, but it's not just in your face kind of pushback sort of humidity. The allergens not as many as we had a couple of days ago. Mold is still on the high side. Fall elm and grass are both low. And uh, this morning we will continue to drop down a couple of more degrees, right around 74. The normal low is 72 right now. So in the vicinity, mostly cloudy skies. And then we'll say have sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds and 94 for a high temperature. We did hit 93 yesterday. So even though we're going to have a couple more clouds, the trend is for temperatures to start to creep up a degree or two each and every day. And about a 30% chance for a couple of scattered showers and and a thunderstorm around here. After that, you know, keep an umbrella handy this afternoon. After that, you can probably put it away for a little while because we got nothing as far as any rain, but warmer temperatures. Take a look ahead to the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stuff, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A suspect this morning under arrest following a deadly crash in Southeast Bear County. The forced deputies to close a portion of the highway near 1604 and Highway 181 Monday night. Happened near, near Calaveras Lake on the southeast side of the county. Deputies learned that a man driving a white pickup truck hit a motorcyclist and had run over the motorcycle. During the course of the investigation, it was discovered that the driver of the pickup truck, 37-year-old Federico Chavez, had been driving recklessly. BCSO says the man on the motorcycle was seriously hurt and died from his injuries. Chavez was placed under arrest for manslaughter, a second-degree felony. He's being held at the Bear County Jail on a $100,000 bond. And a child nearly taken from her mother. Police say this woman, 35-year-old Jessica Vega, tried to kidnap a four-year-old girl at a local Walmart. Now she's in jail. So this was near 1604 and Petranco Road on the city's west side. Investigators say Vega grabbed a shopping cart with the child inside and began pushing it. The mother yelled at Vega and a store employee stepped in to, to help and to stop Vega. According to an affidavit, Vega told the woman, quote, just because she's yours doesn't mean I can't take her, end quote. Now, police booked Vega into the jail yesterday on a $50,000 bond. A loss prevention officer told police they recognized Vega from another incident at a different Walmart. After more than a year, there may be a solution when it comes to noise bleeding over from businesses and into neighborhoods. Areas like the St. Mary's Strip are an example. A consultant from Austin has proposed new permits that could help hold businesses more accountable. The businesses would also need to develop a sound impact plan and form an agreement with neighbors. San Antonio's Noise Task Force will hold a meeting to gather input from businesses before the vote on the proposal. It would still have to go to City Council for a final vote. An American tourist on a cruise in the Bahamas has been killed by a shark. ABC's Andrew Fuji, excuse me, Andrew Dimbert explains it happened in the same location where another American recently died in a shark attack. This morning, an American tourist snorkeling in the Bahamas is dead, killed by a shark. The 58-year-old woman from Pennsylvania was on a cruise and took an independent snorkeling excursion in Nassau with her family Tuesday when authorities say she was attacked by a bull shark, bit in her upper body. Family members along with operators from the boating company was able to rescue the female, brought her on board the tour company boat and brought her here to the Monarch Pew Ramp. 
The woman died before she made it to the hospital. The cruise ship, Harmony of the Seas, was on a seven-night cruise that sailed from Port Canaveral, Florida last Sunday. Cruise line Royal Caribbean saying it's providing support and assistance to the guest's loved ones during this difficult time. Officials describe the area she was snorkeling in off Rose Island as popular with tourists. But three years ago, another deadly shark attack was reported in the same area. 21-year-old college student Jordan Lindsay died when a school of sharks attacked her. Jordan's mom was able to pull her out of the water, but Jordan died from her injuries. Her father says his wife is forever traumatized. She's seen all the blood. She's seen her poor daughter die in her arms. Bahamas police have not yet released the name of the tour company that was involved in this latest attack. The woman's family was also snorkeling with her at the time, but no one else was injured. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. It's part of a push to encourage more vaccine-weary Americans to get the updated COVID booster. Federal health officials now have a selling point. COVID could soon be treated more like the flu, with one annual shot offering year-long protection against severe illness for most people. The announcement comes after the U.S. authorized its first update to COVID vaccines, booster doses that target today's most common Omicron strain. The Health and Human Services Secretary says by the end of this week, 90% of Americans will live within five miles of sites carrying updated vaccines. Connecticut judge has ruled on what Alex Jones and his legal team can and cannot discuss in front of a jury in his upcoming trial. The trial will determine if the radio host and his company Free Speech Systems are liable to pay family members of Sandy Hook shooting victims. Jones is accused of using his show Infowars to promote conspiracy theories about the 2012 school shooting claiming the massacre that killed 20 children and six adults was a hoax. Some of the arguments Jones and his legal team cannot make include saying prior rulings were the result of judicial bias. The parties also cannot discuss an earlier Texas ruling that found Jones and his company liable for defamation against the Sandy Hook families. 437, about 75 degrees. Texas Longhorns get ready for a big game against Alabama this weekend. We're going to tell you why their odds of winning just got a little better. And checking traffic right now. A few cars out there at 281 at Hildebrand. If we see anything of note, we will pass it along to you. And taking a look outside with live cam right now. A lot of clouds up there. That, that will help. We're at 75 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Dallas Cowboys kick off their 2022 season Sunday nights against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they'll go up against the greatest quarterback in the history of the game, seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady. With both Omari Cooper and Cedric Wilson gone and a reworked O-line because of the injury to Tyron Smith, the Cowboys will have to rely heavily on their defense to start the season. To kick off rather Sunday night is at 720. Meanwhile, the Houston Texans try to change their pass with just four wins in each of the last two seasons. They kick off their season with one of their toughest challenges against the Indianapolis Colts. Colts dominated the Texans last season with a 31-3 victory, followed by a 31-0 route kickoff Sunday at noon. UTSA Roadrunners will have to recover quickly from their triple overtime 37-35 loss to the Houston Cougars because they have to face Army next on the road on Saturday. Now, after being three and a half point underdogs against the Cougars, Roadrunners are two point favorites against the Army Black Knights. But the preparation has started with putting their season opening loss behind them. That's especially tough for wide receiver DeCorian Clark given his recruiting process. I was committed there, and uh, my scholarship got taken away uh, when Dan as soon as Dana Hogerson came in. So um, it was kind of hard on me, uh, but I committed here, and then uh, supposedly uh, I was getting a scholarship back, but chose not to. So as right then, I felt like God going to lead you where you need to be. Kickoff on Saturday at West Point is set for 11 a.m. The odds for the Texas Longhorns beating number one ranked Alabama and Austin Saturday just got better, but not by much. Instead of 20 and a half point underdogs, Longhorns now 19 and a half points behind the Crimson Tide. This will give UT the truest test to see how they stack up against talent in the SEC. This is only the 10th meeting between these two schools with Bama winning their last matchup, which was the 2009 BCS championship game at the Rose Bowl. After serving as Nick Saban's offensive coordinator in 2019 and 2020, 
What is the one thing that UT head coach Steve Sarkeesian learned from the seven-time national champion? I would say discipline. And I'm not saying disciplining of the players. I'm saying self-discipline. You know, he's a very regimented man. Um, you know, he knows his routine. He stays disciplined in his routine. And then he, his expectation is, is his staff and his players are going to have that same discipline approach off the field and on the field. Kickoff in Austin is Saturday, set for 11 a.m. Will you have a chance to watch that? Uh, I will make time, oh, make time. <laughs> to okay. watch this one. All right, that's a look at morning sports. All right, time now, 443 and 75 degrees for now. Well, gas prices keep falling. Well, we're going to show you what to expect in the next few months. And next, why Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes is requesting a new trial. In this morning's GMA First Look, Elizabeth Holmes requesting a new trial. In a motion filed this week, Holmes's legal team points to what they say was an unexpected visit to her home last month by key government witness and former Theranos lab director, Dr. Adam Rosendorf, who allegedly said he felt guilty and felt like he had done something wrong in connection with his testimony at the trial, according to Holmes's partner, Billy Evans. His testimony was certainly important to the government in terms of putting the story together. However, a lot of the allegations, in particular the ones that Elizabeth Holmes was convicted of, involved fraud that was made to the investors. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk live to legal expert Danny Brooks. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Fuel prices have been falling for 12 weeks straight. Certainly relief for drivers' wallets after a brutal summer. So will the trend continue? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz looks at what to expect as we turn to the corner in the fall. These are signs of relief for drivers hurting from gas price pains. This right here really make you seem like you're getting somewhere with your dollar. Prices plunged another 12 cents in the past week, part of a three month slide from budget busting highs. It scared me there for a while when it went up to like past 450 and I uh, was nervous, you know, what was I going to do? Remember June, we were paying an average 4.67 a gallon. Now, 3.11 a gallon. What's that come out to? Well, to fill up the average tank, it's now costing $25 less. Industry analysts say prices have tanked largely over worries that an economic slowdown would curb oil consumption. So what's next? I do think there's a little bit more room to go lower in the days ahead, especially if there is more data that shows the economy is slowing. Refineries switching to cheaper winter blends this month should push prices down too. Prices are still 40 cents a gallon higher than a year ago, but unless there's a disruption like a hurricane, Gas Buddies Patrick DeHaan says sky high prices are in the rear view mirror. For now, I think this fall should feature a solid possibility of prices remaining under $3 a gallon for a longer stretch than we've seen in quite some time. Okay. Yeah, I was like right before Eve. Welcome news to Sarah Meyer, who fills her tank five times a week. So roughly 200 or more dollars. Yeah, so that's like a quarter of my paycheck. <laughs> As inflation stings, she wouldn't mind more relief at the pump. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And speaking of gas there, let's look at the roads with Transkide. Highway 281 at Hildebrand, pretty quiet this morning at 448. Mike Ostrange joins us now. Mike, I was down at the uh, coast at Rockport for the long Labor Day weekend, and they've had enough rain down that way. You're not going to believe what I saw on the side of the road closer to the coast. Hmm. Blue bonnets. Oh, wow. Really? Yes. I couldn't believe it. I was like, now nah, that's got to be a weed. Then I looked closer, saw it in several spots. Blue bonnets down near the coast. This late in the season. Yes. It was almost like a new spring because of all the moisture. <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting. Well, it's nice to see, yeah, and, you know, blue bonnets starting to come up a little bit with some of the rain. Um, some of our lawns are coming back after some of that rain. Hopefully so, because after today, 
Rain chance is pretty much out the window. The moon is continuing to uh, approach its full phase, which is going to be on Saturday, and that is the known as the corn moon. But also in this this year, it is going to be the harvest moon because it will be the full moon closest to the autumnal equinox. And again, full moon on Saturday. Thank you for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. Got some clouds hanging around here right now, and here's the uh, satellite picture over the last 12 hours. And uh, well, obviously these clouds coming in here from the west are what kind of dominate the picture. But notice yesterday we had a couple of little sprinkles and this flow as this uh, loops back on through coming in here from the north. That's what's going to be bringing down that northerly flow underneath some of these clouds. That's what will bring in our chance for some rain today. So we've got clouds hanging around here mid 70s throughout the rest of the morning. A little bit more sunshine thrown in late morning. So we'll make it up to 86 degrees at noon and we are going to be topping off today at 94 93 yesterday. So that will be the trend the next couple of days a degree each and every day and they're 30 percent chance chance for a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there later on this afternoon. Also, now we will still have enough humidity left over later on today to put heat index readings up into the upper 90s, even a couple of triple digits by uh, down around Catula later on this afternoon. 98 is what it's going to feel like in New Braunfels as well as Gonzales. Later on in the forecast, humidity should be lower in the afternoon, but not today. We're talking few days down the road. Here's the uh, computer model and by early afternoon we start to see a couple of those showers, a couple of thunderstorms popping up around here with a few clouds and again it's going to be most of us don't see rain today but at least it is a somewhat better chance than what we had around here yesterday. That's going to be going into the late afternoon hours and just past dinner time. Maybe even a couple of them uh, going into the early evening hours, and that should be about it. Now, as far as the tropics are concerned, first of all, nothing to concern us at all. However, Earl has become a hurricane right now. It's going to continue to work its way up into the North Atlantic. It's not going to affect the United States. Bermuda, yes, it is forecast to become at least a Category 3 hurricane, a major hurricane in the next couple of days. There's Danielle not doing anything and still we've got a couple of more disturbances down here right around the uh, Cape Verde Islands. But um, Still kind of a kind of a tranquil. It is starting to heat up a little bit more as expected as we get in towards September, which is the busiest time. Actually, Saturday is the peak of the hurricane season. And after having a uh, just nothing in the month of August, it's starting to fire up a little bit more. Anyway, 86 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. So clouds this morning, a little bit of a break there. Then 94 for high temperature later on today. Mostly, uh, well, partly to mostly sunny skies. We've got a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms that are going to be thrown on in this afternoon. And then after today, again, rain chances, you know, other than a little sea breeze along the coast, rain chances pretty much out the window, and temperatures are going to be good three, four, almost five degrees above normal in the mid 90s. Plenty of sunshine all the way through the weekend, starting off into next week. Well, we can hang tight below 100. I think we're okay with that. Yeah. Yes. And as long as I, I mean, the ground does start to dry out a little bit more, mm -hmm. so that makes it easier to heat up. But still, I think we're not going to throw all my eggs in the basket yet, but 100's <laughs> done. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll take that. Yeah. We'll take that. 452, about 75 degrees. And Justin Bieber pauses his world tour once again. We're going to tell you what he's telling his fans on Instagram, plus why it's officially the Summer of Styles. A new apocalyptic thriller series debuts tomorrow, plus Justin Bieber pauses his world tour again. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Planes are crashing and no one can see why. A problem with the world's oil supply throws countries into chaos. That's where we start with Last Light, a new apocalyptic thriller series starring Matthew Fox. The last series we saw him in Lost. He talked to me about why he basically came out of retirement to tell this story. This oil situation, this this family that's that's beautiful together and loves each other very much at the core of it being being separated um, across continents by this crisis and, and their their quest and their need to get back together again and to be reunited. Last Light debuts Thursday on Peacock. Justin Bieber's world tour once again on pause due to his health. The singer took to Instagram to let fans know that recently restarting his tour has really taken a toll on him. And after last weekend's performance in Brazil, he got off stage and was overtaken by exhaustion. Earlier this year, Bieber revealed he was battling Ramsey Hunt syndrome, which had paralyzed part of his face. He says he's going to be okay, but needs time to rest and get better. No, it's not the same. 
It was officially the Summer of Styles, Harry Styles' smash hit single As It Was, named Song of the Summer by Billboard, topping their Songs of Summer chart from Memorial Day to Labor Day. It also just topped Billboard's Hot 100 Singles chart for a 12th week, the longest-running number one of the decade. And happy birthday, Leslie Jones. The actress and comedian is 55 today, while Westworld star Evan Rachel Wood is 35. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 457 and 75 degrees for now. This morning, the Justice Department and former President Donald Trump's legal team face a new deadline. What a new report is revealing about what FBI agents found inside Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy looking there at Highway 281 at Hildebrand. Things are moving, uh, but kind of quiet. Stephen Cavazos just walked in the studio. We'll be checking with him very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Bear County Sheriff's Deputy's Office arresting the man involved in a crash, killing one person. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you who that person is and what investigators say happened. Parents react to Ubaldi's first day back at school. You can try to have all the protection you want, but when it boils down to it, you never know how you're going to react to a situation. The school district is saying about the first day of school attendance. And FBI agents who searched former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home find a document detailing a foreign government's nuclear capabilities. Outside with live cam, mid-70s out there, morning clouds. Looks like we've seen another overall pattern shift away from some of the rainier weather. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, September 7th. Thanks for joining us. Hope we had a good week so far for some of you. It's been a short week and, you know, the weather hasn't been too bad. Not bad at all. Mike Osterhage is here and it's definitely warms up in the afternoon when you factor in that humidity, Mike Osterhage. Yeah, that's what we're going to be dealing with the next couple of days. So we do have somewhat of a heat index in each and every day. Yesterday we hit 93. Today we're going to be up to 94. But and you're talking about that uh, kind of pattern change that'll take place after today because we still have some rain chances actually better than what we had yesterday. A better chance of rain right now. We're holding at 76 degrees. That that bottom number dew point is at 71, so it's still not bad outside. I'll call it a kind of a pleasant morning. 94 high temperature today. The normal high average is 92 right now, and normal average low temperature is 72. The aquifer big hit yesterday, down 1.2 feet after a nice big jump over the weekend. Mold is high. Fall elm and grass are all on the low side. So take a look right now at some of the temperatures around the area, and these numbers are up couple of notches compared to this time yesterday. We do have some clouds hanging around here right now, which tends to act like a little bit of a, uh, a blanket. So uh, pleasant and plenty of clouds around this morning. Then later on this afternoon, some scattered storms, about a 30% chance for some showers and thunderstorms. We've got another kind of a, a line of some uh, scattered showers with this disturbance that's going to be moving in here from the north later on today. We will, like I said, be in the mid 90s and then mostly sunny and hot the rest of the week. Looking at 95, 96, and that's going to be the situation all the way into the weekend as well. So pretty much after today, other than maybe a stray shower down there along the coast, that's it as far as any rain. So hopefully your grass kind of soaked in all that we've had past a couple of weeks around here. Take a closer look at the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Stephen. Anything uh, going on on the highways and byways? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, I'm trying to let my grass grow out right now, and I think I'm seeing some green out there, so that's some good news. And actually, that's what we're seeing on our map as well. Lots of green on the screen, but we first start here with Trans Guide 37. They're at Hackberry and Hildebrand. Not a lot to show you out there, so it's a happy morning for drivers that have to head out in the next few minutes or so, but US 90 at Leon Creek. It does look like traffic is already picking up as we take you to the map. As I mentioned, no slowdowns, no red detected just yet, but it's that early time, so we really won't see any of that build up this early unless something does happen on the roadways, but don't worry. We'll make sure to get you through it. If your travels are going to take you to the Alamo City, let's check out those inbound times because things are also looking pretty green here. 25 minutes if you are traveling from I-10 eastbound heading in from Bernie to the downtown area. It's a 27 minute drive time from 281 southbound heading in from Bolverde and 26 minutes for our friends up in uh, New Braunfels if you're traveling down I-35 southbound. So these are good times right now and it's a good day to get out on the roadways this early in the morning. Again, 37 in Hackberry, 410 still pretty quiet, but we do know that there are those road closures to be on the lookout for. We'll have more updates on that in the next few minutes. Mark stuff.
Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a crash, uh, rather a man involved in a crash that killed one person is behind bars. Deputies say they arrested a driver one day after he crashed into a motorcyclist. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live and walks us through the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. Well, we are learning deputies responded to that crash between the pickup and the motorcycle on Monday around 7.30 p.m. This happening near Loop 1604 and Highway 281. The man on your screen right now, he has been arrested and identified as 37-year-old Federico Chavez. We can take a look at what that scene looked like on Monday. Deputies tell us the pickup truck struck the motorcyclist, throwing him to the ground and running over the motorcycle. Now, the man on the bike was taken to a nearby hospital with major injuries where he later died. That victim has been identified as 58-year-old Louis Earl Fender. Now, during the investigation, deputies say they found that Chavez was the driver of the pickup truck and had been driving recklessly. Witnesses reporting Chavez had been passing vehicles in a no passing zone, driving fast beyond the speed limit, as well as tailgating the motorcycle. Now, we are also learning investigators found open alcohol containers inside the truck. Mark Stephanie, the driver of that pickup truck, has been arrested uh, for manslaughter, a second degree felony. He is being held at Bear County Jail right now on a 100000 dollar bond. This case remains under investigation. Of course, we'll update you as more information is made available. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. His parents picked up their kids from school in the Valley yesterday. There was anxiety and nervousness. This morning, the district says they had almost 89% of their anticipated enrollment on the first day of school. And last year, that number was at about 86%. The kids, however, were all smiles as they walked out of Uvalde Elementary. And we did see a large presence of DPS officers at the school Monday for training. And yesterday, those officers were patrolling and standing by the gates. And there were mixed emotions from parents about the DPS presence. She, well, we were watching the news earlier and she, it said 33 state troopers and she was a little bit more happy with that, you know, and uh, especially with the fencing and everything going on here. As parents, that helps us out too. You can try to have all the protection you want, but when it boils down to it, you never know how you're going to react to a situation. Now this comes as a DPS spokesperson announced five officers who were at Robb Elementary on May 24th are being investigated by the Texas Inspector General's Office for their actions that day. Two are on leave with pay pending the results of an investigation. The FAA has denied a $50 million funding request for the San Antonio airport, but the mayor says this decision is not a setback for the airport's strategic plans. It's a matter of timing. The, the, the projects that were approved fell within the shovel-ready category. That's not what this application uh, was was best emphasized. These are projects that are still in development. Now, Mayor Ron Nierberg addressed the grant denial on our case at Q&A at 6 o'clock. He says the city has been successful in most of its grant applications, but the FAA opted to go with more shovel-ready projects. Now, the mayor says the decision will not impact timing on airport improvements. He says the city is still on track to start its biggest project, Terminal C, in 2024. 507 in your morning headlines. Former Trump advisor Steve Bannon expected to surrender tomorrow on charges related to his fundraising effort to build a border wall. Just before Trump left office, he pardoned Bannon on federal fraud charges related to the alleged scheme. But presidential pardons do not apply to state and local investigations. Bannon called the indictment, quote, phony charges, end quote. Meanwhile, there's a development in the investigation into documents seized at former President Trump's Florida home. The Washington Post reports material found at a Mar-a-Lago includes information related to nuclear capabilities. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more on both cases. This morning, new fallout from the classified material allegedly found at former President Trump's Florida residence. The Washington Post reports a document FBI agents seized at Mar-a-Lago describes a foreign government's military defenses and nuclear capabilities. The Post adding some of the seized documents detail top secret U.S. operations so closely guarded that many senior national security officials are kept in the dark about them. It comes as the Justice Department and former President Trump's legal team face a new deadline. A judge has given them until Friday to submit a list of potential candidates who could be a so-called special master in the case, an independent party who will review the documents. Bill Barr, who served as Trump's attorney general, says the judge's ruling granting a special master was wrong. 
He says the Justice Department should appeal. I don't think the appointment of a special uh, master is going to hold up. I don't think it changes the ball game so much as maybe we'll have a rain, uh, rain delay for a couple mm. of innings. Meanwhile, a major development in the investigation into the alleged effort by Trump supporters to overturn the 2020 election results in Georgia, where authorities are looking into the breach of voting data in rural Coffee County. Investigators say this surveillance video shows a local Republican Party leader escorting two operatives reportedly working for Trump's attorney into the county's election offices. The video is from January 7, 2021, the same day authorities say the office's voting machines were breached. The woman escorting those men has been identified as the former Republican chairwoman of Coffee County, Kathy Latham, who's under criminal investigation. She's accused of submitting false certifications, declaring Trump the winner in Georgia. Latham's lawyers responding to the video, saying Latham would not and has not knowingly been involved in any impropriety in any election. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 10 minutes past the hour, 75 degrees. Apple's expected to announce some new products at a special event today. We're going to tell you what other items are making a debut besides the anticipated iPhone 14. Are you ready for a traffic jam downtown today? Unless you just really need to be here, why you may want to avoid the area later today. And taking a look outside with a live cam, nice and cloudy, 75 degrees for now. Things will heat up by the end of the week. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 514 crowds are preparing to fill the Alamo Dome and the streets of downtown San Antonio. Puerto Rican rapper Bad Bunny is just hours away from hitting the stage this evening, but it's not just fans that are preparing. Your traffic authority, Stephen Cavasso, joins us once again to talk about this event. Well, I'll tell you this, this is a place I'm not going to be only because it's a little bit later in the evening and I'll be asleep. But uh, the Alamo Dome right behind me is pretty quiet right now, but we know nearby businesses are preparing and hopeful to cash in. And those who live near the dome or even work in the area are trying to prepare for a lot of that extra midweek traffic. Now, concert goers will be trying to get to the Alamo Dome right in the middle of rush hour traffic, so you know it's going to be busy. The event will have a pre-party at HB Plaza starting at 3. Doors will open early at 530 and Bad Bunny is expected to take the stage around 7 p.m. in front of get this 54,000 people. San Antonio is going to be the center of the concert universe and so we're encouraging everybody to get downtown as early as you can. That was Richard Oliver with the Alamo Dome. He says that VIA is also trying to help ease some of the potential congestion. They'll have additional bus services that'll be available from the AT&T Center or Crossroads Park and Ride to help bring in the crowd. So hopefully that will give them some ease. But the services start at 5 in the afternoon and a one-way ride to the concert is only $1.30. Uh, there and back, it's $2.60, guys. So it'll be a little bit busy this afternoon. Sounds like park and ride may be the way to go. It may be. Yes. Um, we're going to have more coming up, I guess, on this story after the break. Time check is 525. We want to apologize. We're working through some technical difficulties right now, but we're going to take a look at traffic and weather in just a minute. But let's get a look at the commute because things are still shaping up to look fine. There's I-10 at Proband. Traffic is moving, but we are seeing that things are moving pretty quickly there at 35 at Evans. Remember to slow down. We know 35 is one of those busy corridors, and we typically see at least hundreds and thousands of people drive out there every single day. But there at 35 at South Cross, a little bit of a different story. Not a lot to show you out there. 37 at Hackberry. We're just really want to give you this look at the commute before you get out there this morning because it is a perfect time to get your day started. Grab that breakfast taco or head out to go grab a cup of coffee, but you may find a little bit of a delay right over there. US 90 at Leon Creek is pretty quiet as well, as well as 410 at Fredericksburg, but really want to take you to the map because there's nothing else to show you out there. I did notice that there was a little bit of a slowdown just a smidge north of New Braunfels along I-35. That could be due to some road work out there, but that is always expected around this time, but it's nothing really major that's going to hinder the commute. You can see that we have a lot of green on the screen, especially if your travels are going to take you into the Alamo City. There's really no need to rush. We showed you how long it was going to take you if you were traveling on I-10 or 281 or even on 35 this early in the morning. Really to worry about here, but always be on the lookout. I-10 here in the east side of Bear County. Barrier work will continue on Friday. That's September 9th. 
starting uh, again on Friday, September 9th, and that should be lasting through the weekend. It is going to be overnight, so 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when drivers can expect that full closure westbound main lanes from file road to loop 1604 and if you've driven down I-10 heading in or to from Seguin you know that there is going to be that work out there so portion of that work that will take place on Friday up until September 12th. So plan your commute ahead of time of course that information is on our website at ksat.com slash traffic where you'll also find list of closures out there but right now 281 at Hildebrandt things are moving just fine but US 90 Mike things look a little busy. Well, kind of this time of the morning when things get busy. Thank you very much, sir. As you saw uh, in some of those trans guide cameras and also on this one, we do have some clouds hanging around here this morning. All right, I want to jump ahead in time to next week, and this is the Climate Prediction Center, the outlook for the 13th through the 17th. And this doesn't mean we're going to be on the warm side, but it's kind of the odds of being on the warmer side next week are a mm, little bit better than uh, than a 50 50 chance. And let me jump back to that very quickly. And then the odds of seeing rain are on the lower side, and this is going into next week. Now, a little bit further into the future, the 15th into the 21st, better odds of being on the warmer side as we head in toward the uh, kind of third week of September and about a 50 50 chance or leaning a little bit on the drier side. So it looks like after getting some rain in the month of August or at least the latter portion portion of the month of August that uh, September other than today is going to be on the warmer side or at least a good chance of being on the warmer side as well as on the drier side. We're going to bottom out at 74 this morning. Got uh, plenty of clouds hanging around here and then we will uh, get up to 86 today at noon. 30% chance for a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms out here. We have a disturbance coming in here from the north. Also 94 for a high temperature later on today. So just a couple of degrees above normal. We have had a lot of clear skies, a lot of blue skies, I should say the past couple of days mixed in with some of those clouds, but now we got some moisture that's moving on in here, and so that will help with keeping some clouds around here, and then we've got the disturbance, which is sliding on in here from the north, and this is the one where once we get into mid-afternoon, we're going to see a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms here and there. Didn't have much of anything yesterday. Today, like I said, about a 30% chance, so... Mm, not everybody seeing rain, but at least there will be a few of them out there and still can see a, a decent downpour with any of these showers or thunderstorms that do pop up. And this is going to be the situation in toward dinner time and even into the early evening hours on top of that. Here's what it's looking like right now as far as the upper air pattern. Still got this low off to the east of us, which is not a good position as far as a rainmaker because the rainy side of that is on the right hand side of it. So between the low and the high, this is sort of where the sinking air is. Although with this northerly flow, we get these little disturbances that slide on in here. So and again, they can produce some, uh, you know, a couple of showers, thunderstorms here and there, which is going to be the situation later on today. So as we go into the next couple of days, though, um, well, first of all, big, big storm. That's actually a tropical system, which is hopefully going to get some rain to California. They desperately need it. 116 yesterday in Sacramento. For it, and that will not have any impact on our weather. High pressure is going to continue to move on in here. Uh, the low just sort of fizzles on out, so this is going to keep us pretty much high and dry as we go into the next, uh, well, the next few days and really the next week to week and a half. That low up there around the Great Lakes, more of a fallish type pattern, but not really going to do anything for us. There will be a couple of fronts that try to move on through here, sort of dry fronts, uh, maybe a little bit of a wind shift line by the first of next week, but temperatures will still be on the warm side. 86 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and then high temperature today up to 94. A couple of scattered showers, thunderstorms, 30% chance for some rain. And really after today, that's it as far as any rain is concerned. It is going to be hot and it is going to be sunny going through the weekend into the first part of next week. A whole lot more coming up after the break. Stick around. Fire forces eight families out into the street. The woman who lives in that second floor apartment says she had no working smoke detectors. I'll tell you what she says saved her life. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, looking over there, it's kind of cloudy, which is good news. And we're at 75 degrees. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is September 7th. Knock on plexiglass. We think we've worked through our 
uh, technical issues, and we are back on track for this half hour. Yes, uh, hopefully it's all well, kind of like the weather, very good. Uh, not too humid out there, Mike. No, it's it's really not. It's kind of a pleasant morning. I mean, we have some of our you know late summer humidity, but it's not like it pushes back as you step outside. We do have some clouds hanging around here as well. Temperature has been well, it's been holding steady for about the past hour, right around 76 degrees. Dew points at 71, which yeah, there's humidity. You'd like it to be below 60. That's not going to be happening anytime soon, uh, but it's not up in the mid 70s. Remember last week we had those dew points in the morning hours that were 75, 76 degrees. That was really kind of tropical humidity. So again, it's not bad this morning and temperatures right now are up maybe a degree or two overall compared to yesterday. Comfort burning stage both at 70, 75 Honda, 76 in Converse as well as out there at the airport. We do have a high amount of mold. Fall elm and grass are both on the low side and throughout the rest of today. 86 degrees. We'll have some clouds hanging around here this morning. A little more sunshine thrown on in here. And then we do have some scattered showers and thunderstorms later on today. About a 30% chance of rain. So yesterday was the lesser chance. Today a slightly better chance for some showers and thunderstorms. 94 for high temperature. So we will be slightly on the warm side, but the trend and that's up a degree from yesterday. That's the trend the next couple of days. So it is definitely going to be hot and it's going to be sunny as we finish out this week going into the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Getting ready to hit the roads. Traffic Authority. Stephen, anything big going on? Not at this moment, Mike. 410 at Fredericksburg. Things look pretty quiet this early in the morning, but let's go ahead and get a quick look around town. Mikel is not looking too bad as well, but we did see a lot more traffic in certain areas. One of those spots being at 35, but there at 281, things will look pretty quiet. Taking you to the map, it's still the same thing that we've showed you. It's a copy paste type of morning. Lots of green on the screen, so there's no real need to rush out and get the day started extra early. But if you do, you can enjoy the roads to yourself pretty much. Just always make sure to watch out for other drivers. All right, if you are traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities, you are in luck. It's still pretty pleasant on I-37 traveling in from Pleasanton. Highway 90 looks like about a 30 minute drive time at 536 this morning, and that arrival from Lytle should be about 17 minutes if you are traveling on I-35 northbound. But taking it back to Transguy, the area 35 at Evans is where we do see traffic that's already picking up. As I mentioned earlier, it's a busy spot, but just make sure to watch out for other drivers. We'll be doing the same. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, it has been a sleepless night for families who live in a north side apartment complex. They were forced out of their homes by fire, and it broke out just before midnight at the apartment complex on Jackson Keller Road near West Avenue. Katrina Weber is there with a live report, and Katrina, did everyone make it out safely? Yeah, thankfully, all people are safe. Now, one woman told me that her cat did die in this fire. Mm -hmm. Seven of the eight units in this apartment building here behind me took a beating, either from the fire, smoke, or all the water that was used to put it out. The firefighters say it looks like the fire started in a second floor apartment here at the Mediterranean Villas, but it wasn't long before everyone in the building had to get out of their homes as the flames and smoke began to spread. One woman told me she lives in the actual apartment where the fire started. She says although her smoke detectors did not work, she still managed to wake up and get out. She says the smell of smoke is what woke her up and what may have saved her life. Again, she says that she did lose her cat in this fire, which broke out just before midnight. The firefighters so far have not released the cause of the fire. And that woman who lives in that apartment told me that she has no idea how the fire started either. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. A new kind of COVID vaccine is becoming available this week. It's the first new formula since the shots came out back in 2020. And CNN's Amy Kiley reports experts say it offers better protection against current forms of the virus. I really believe this is why God gave us two arms, one for the flu shot and the other one for the COVID shot. Health officials say COVID boosters are likely to become annual starting this fall. They say people can get them the same day as their flu shot. With annual updated COVID-19 shots matched to the currently circulating strains for most of the population. The CDC recommends a new booster that's available starting this week. It's a combination of the old vaccine recipe and new protection against the current Omicron versions. People 12 and older can get the Pfizer version. The Moderna one is for people 18 and up. We expect millions of people to get the shot this month as folks get back to school, get back to work, and get back into their regular routines after the summer. 
But the annual booster plan has some caveats. It could change if a new variant causes a major surge and some people at higher risk might need more than one shot a year. For those who have underlying conditions, immunocompromised, we may need to do it more. The virus isn't causing as much severe illness these days, but it's still around and experts say it could be for years. I just tested positive for COVID. And so I'll be taking my meetings from here, from home, uh, virtually for the next few days until I test negative. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Governor Greg Abbott has received an award for expanding Internet access across the state. He met with local business leaders yesterday in Laredo. During the visit, he was awarded the Broadband Trailblazer Award by Texas Broadband Now. The group says Abbott is committed to ensuring all Texans get access to high speed and reliable Internet. He also spoke about protocols that were not followed in the Uvalde Valley school shooting. We wanted to ensure that in Uvalde, as well as across the entire state, we were going to have our schools as safe as possible uh, when they opened for their students to return. Uh, and so I issued directives to the Texas Education Agency as well as other state agencies uh, to conduct inspections all summer long to make sure that the best safety measures are being used. Abbott went on to say that at the request of the mayor of U Valley, he directed Texas Department of Public Safety to post troopers at all the schools to make sure that not only were they safe, but also the people attending those schools would be safe. And lawyers for Elon Musk and Twitter are clashing in court. They appeared before a judge yesterday to discuss the $44 billion acquisition deal Musk is trying to terminate. The trial is set to start October 17. But Musk's team wants to push it back a month. They want time to update their counterclaims after Twitter's former security head, Peter Zatko, accused the platform of violating security orders. He also said Twitter misled the public about the prevalence of bots and spam accounts. Twitter has denied those claims, calling Zatko a disgruntled former employee. All right, a lot of people getting excited about everything pumpkin spice, but is this taking it a bit too far? Nissen's Cup of Noodles releasing a pumpkin spice flavor this October. The instant ramen is sauced with a special pumpkin spice seasoning. Just need to add water and put it in the microwave. Nissen said it's the perfect blend of sweet, savory, and spice. If you want to make it a treat, the company suggests topping off your noodles with some whipped cream. Oh. The fall flavor will be on shelves in select Walmarts next month. Uh, Steph, I couldn't tell. Where do you stand on this? <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Mike looks for... Yeah. Well, yeah. But could it be like a kind of like a squash soup? You know, how you have... Uh, sure. Uh, work with me here, folks. <laughs> so I, I love, you know, like, like creamy squash, you know, soup. Or I think this is an altogether different animal, but I like where you're going with this. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Trying to look at the uh, you know little the, the positive cup, cup of noodles half I'll full. I'll stop here, so. that. 541, 75 degrees. <laughs> and the key component used with sleep apnea machines are being recalled. We're going to tell you about the part that's causing a serious safety concern. Outside with live cam on a positive note. We're so we're so glad you start your days with us here on Case Hat and GMSA. We've got a few more cards on the road. We're going to check back in with Stephen and see how those cars are doing. And welcome back. It's 544. In your morning consumer headlines, millions of masks used with sleep apnea machines have been recalled for safety concerns. Philips Respironics recalled more than 17 million masks used with their continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP and bi-level positive airway pressure or BiPAP machines. Now, the Food and Drug Administration says magnets connect and hold the mask components in place but they can affect the function of implanted metallic medical devices like brain stents, aneurysm clips, and pacemakers. At least 14 serious injuries have been reported. Recalled mass types are Dream Wisp, Dream Wear, Amara View, Wisp, and Wisp Youth. The FDA says people can continue to use the products if they or people around them do, do have implanted metal objects in their body. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem has signed an executive pro proclaiming executive proclamation, rather, naming a seven-year-old boy the state's corn ambassador, Tariq, or the corn kid, as he's known, became a viral sensation for clips in which he enthusiastically declares his love for corn. Over the weekend, he accepted an invite to South Dakota's Corn Palace. As Tariq's fame grows, he's even catching the attention of celebrities like Martha Stewart and Kevin Bacon. His fast food chains are also taking notice. Last month, Chipotle posted a promotional video featuring Tariq on social media. Oh, that's cool. 
He is the Corn Ambassador <laughs> for South Dakota. I like that Corn Palace right there in the video. Time now, 546, 75 degrees for now. 281 at Jones Maltzberger, no problems. A few more cars at 410 by the airport. 281 at 410. Stephen will be back coming up. Time check is now just about 549. Let's get a look right now at the commute 281 there. Things are looking just fine by the airport, but 1604 Kitty Hawk does look like traffic's already getting just a smidge bit busier out there. But 281 St. Mary's, you can see, I would say it's still a little quiet, but other spots of town, we can always expect that traffic to pick up as we inch closer to 6 a.m. We take you to the map and as we continue to see those quiet roadways, we also want to give your attention to those road closures that we tend to see in and around the Alamo City. So plan your commute ahead of time here off Loop 4 10 on the west side of San Antonio. This is something that we mentioned a little bit earlier pavement work. Now this will begin Tuesday, September 13th, so that's next week, but still plan ahead because it should be wrapping up on Tuesday, September 27th. So we'll see about two weeks of work there. This will start at seven in the evening and wrap at five in the morning. That's when you can expect alternating main lane closures in both directions from Ingram Road to US 90, but you know where to find that information. It's on ksat.com slash traffic. Scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll find a full list of closures out there, but right now traffic here on trans guide looks like it's getting just a little bit busier guys yes it is people are waking up and headed to work yeah thanks steven good morning mike good morning i think somebody, go sent this, somebody sent this picture for you oh. yeah and i had oh. to look up where across texas is i had never heard of it before of course there's a million towns in the lone star yep. state up northeast of college station and look at that water i mean just that that just puts you at ease i think looking at this picture <laughs> how relaxing to be out there fishing with his son Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. Um, we got some clouds hanging around here right now. We'll see a fair amount throughout the morning hours and then kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today. We'll bottom out at 74 degrees. We're holding at 76 as of right now. The normal low is 72. So we are on the warm side, and that's due in part to the fact that we've got those clouds that are acting like a bit of a blanket. We'll be up to 86 degrees at noon, like I said, mixture of sunshine and clouds. And then getting into early afternoon, that's when we start to see some rain chances move on in here. Going for a 30% chance for a couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area. 94 for high temperature. 92 is the normal high, so we are a little bit above what's the average this time of year, and that is going to be the trend all the way through the week and then weekend and going into next week as well. Here's the computer model, and again, early afternoon, we start to see a couple of these showers, thunderstorms pop up around the area. And notice how everything is coming in here out of the north. So we still have that, that flow between two big, big systems in other parts of the country. And it takes these little disturbances and throws them down in here, which, yeah, I mean, it's not like a big storm system, if you will, but at least we are going to see some rain around late this afternoon going into the evening hours, as well as uh, maybe even mid evening, a couple of these leftovers around here. So here's what it looks like on the satellite and radar loop. Two different things you have to look at. First of all, as it loops back on through some of the rain yesterday coming in here from the north and then a lot of moisture kind of sliding in on top of that. Well, that's actually being thrown out from that is Hurricane K out there in the Pacific Ocean. That's not going to have any direct impact, obviously indirectly some of these clouds that are getting uh, kind of blown off the top of it and in on top of us. That's going to continue to work its way up the coast and hopefully give uh, California some heat relief. 116 in Sacramento yesterday, an all time high there. Elsewhere around the country, not really a heck of a lot going on, and you can see kind of this flow coming in here out of the uh, the north. So as far as any other tropical systems, there's nothing that's going to have any sort of direct impact from us in the Atlantic Basin. Here's what I was talking about, the two features, the low and the high. Combined flow, that's what's taking these little disturbances and throwing them on in our direction. There's the uh, hurricane down there off the Baja of California that, like I said, will work its way up the coast. That high is going to kind of keep it directed over that direction. And then on the other side of it, it's going to dominate our weather as far as really causing some sinking atmosphere and that prevents any of those little disturbances from popping up at all. Any showers from trying to pop up after today. Also, that's going to help to heat us up. 86 at noon, partly cloudy skies. Make it up to 94 later on. A few scattered showers, thunderstorms, 30% chance for some rain. So unfortunately, most of us won't see rain, but this is the best, a better chance than what we had yesterday as well as on Monday. 94 today, add another degree to that the next couple of days, add a couple of more degrees here and there. So we're looking at mid 90s, three, four, maybe close to five degrees above normal going in toward the weekend. Some morning clouds, lots of sunshine in the afternoon, and that 
right now, long range trend looks like it's going to continue on through most of next week. It's slightly on the warm side and on the dry side. Okay, but we're in the 70s in the morning, so that's good. That's true, yes. <laughs> and that's usually where our small incremental changes begin as we head towards a seasonal change. No fronts, I mean, there may be a, a dry one trying to come sure. through first of next week, but nothing that's like the doozy fall front or anything like that. Not yet. We will await the doozy, 554, 75 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, one, zero, three, fireball two, daily four, six, four, eight, zero, fireball two. Cash five, two, 10, 15, 16, 26. And Mega Million, 6, 17, 46, 59, 68, Mega Ball 2, Mega Plier 4. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, the extreme heat and wildfire threat all across the West. We're talking about from Colorado to Utah, all time and all time September records broken. So when will they get relief and what will the grid do in the meantime? Also, the massive jewel settlement, the company agreeing to pay hundreds of millions of dollars to settle the claims that it marketed to children. What comes next? We're going to have those stories and so much more right here on GMA. One of San Antonio's historic homes will host a festival dedicated to the paranormal. Black Swan Inn will welcome psychics, vendors, and paranormal professionals, and people who have their own encounters with spirits. It's happening September 17th. We have all the details for this paranormal party right now on KSAT.com. We're going inside and outside a unique school founded by a woman with the goal of giving kids a new, old approach to learning. At Transguide right now, the sun is about to come up. We're working on it in some spots right now. Traffic is looking really good. Steven is standing by with a look at that and your forecast straight ahead. It's Wednesday, we'll be back. One woman says she was saved by the smell. Smoke from a fire in her apartment building, she says is what woke her up. I'll tell you what is next for the people who live here. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. A man is in custody this morning after deputies say he hit a man on his motorcycle with his pickup truck, killing him. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you who that man is and what investigators say happened. And a quick look outside with live cam this morning. We're at 75 degrees, not too humid, and there are clouds out there. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, September 7th, and it may be kind of a weird week for some of us waking up, and it's already Wednesday because being off on Labor Day yeah. Monday. So it kind of feels like Tuesday. We'll take that right now. <laughs> but it is 601, time to get that coffee, and uh, looking forward to a day of possible showers, maybe. And Mike said that we actually have a little bit better chance today than yeah. even yesterday. Yeah, we've been looking at this the past couple of days, today was going to be the better shot mm -hmm. at some rain. 30% chance. So, I mean, not a sure thing where you live, but at least uh, we'll be better than the past couple of days because hopefully you get some rain today because after today, that's pretty much about it for what's well, looking like a long time. All right, some clouds hanging around here right now, and we've got temperatures that are in the uh, low to mid 70s, actually up just a couple of notches compared to yesterday. But like Steph was mentioning, it is still fairly pleasant as far as the humidity is concerned. Obviously, there's some out there, but it's not like it's just, you know, a wet towel kind of uh, humidity. Molds on the high side, fall elm grass are both low, and throughout the rest of the morning, we will have some of the clouds hanging around here. I think we we'll eventually bottom out at 74, 72 is the normal low temperature and then we'll make it up through the uh, mid 80s at 86 at noon sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds if you don't have any showers around we'll see more sunshine obviously 94 for a high temperature today and again a 30 percent chance for a shower thunderstorm and that 94 by the way yesterday was 93 that's two degrees above normal and that's going to be the trend another degree or so each and every day it is uh, after today it's looking like a warm and sunny forecast or should i say a hot and sunny forecast. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, any uh, any big problems out there? Yeah, I've had a pretty easy morning over here, Mike. As we get a look there at 35, not a lot to show you, but we do know traffic is already picking up. It's at busy time, so we can always expect to see the commute just get a little bit more hectic, but we saw 37. You saw a lot more folks out there, but we still have some quiet spots. I-10 at ProBand. If you have to travel through there, you're still in luck, but other areas like 35, I mean, you may encounter some more vehicle out, more vehicles, I should say, so just watch out carefully and make sure you are following the rules of the road. But thankfully, as we take you to the map, there's really nothing to show you. We do have some active construction spots. You also notice that we do have some uh, yellow icon that popped up there. Whenever we
always see a yellow icon that shows like that on the map that does indicate that we're seeing some slow moving traffic through the area. There was a stall near 410 in the westbound lanes of Nacogdoches, but I believe that's already cleared out. However, we'll have to take a closer look, find out what's slowing down traffic there. But thankfully, nothing is slowing down traffic. If you're traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities, it is green across the board. 29, 28 minutes, I should say, I-10 westbound. If you're heading in from Seguin to the downtown area and about 33 minutes for our friends in Lavernia who are traveling in the northbound lanes of 87 and for our friends in Flotusville, 28 minutes at this hour to get to the Alamo City. So don't rush right now. Again, we're not seeing a slowdown in those areas just yet, but we know traffic will be picking up in the next few minutes. We'll have more updates coming up right here on GMSA. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, flames and smoke are some of the first sights people saw early this morning at a north side apartment complex. They had to run from their homes as fire broke out in their building. It happened on Jackson Keller near West Avenue. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, how bad was the damage and where are those people now? Well, good morning. Firefighters tell us that seven of the eight units in this building behind me have some kind of damage, either from the fire, the smoke, or all the water that they used to put out this fire. Now, everyone in the building did get out safely. We saw members of the American Red Cross here earlier this morning, and they were helping at least some of these people to find a new place to stay. No one can stay in this building from what we've been told uh, right now. Now, this fire broke out just before midnight. We have some video to show you from that time as firefighters put out this fire. One neighbor told me that he woke up and noticed that one whole side of this building was just glowing with flames. Again, everyone made it out safely out of these eight units. I spoke to one woman who says that fire actually started inside her apartment. She says she doesn't know how it started, but she did get out because she woke up to the smell of smoke. She says she never heard her smoke detector go off, but she and her family made it out safely. However, she says that their pet cat did die in this fire. <clears throat> and again, uh, everyone out safely. We don't know yet exactly how the fire caused. I did ask that woman if she had any idea, and she says she does not know how the fire started. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a man involved in a deadly crash is now in custody and is facing some serious charges. Deputies say they arrested a driver one day after he crashed into a man on a motorcycle. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live and walks us through the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. We're learning that crash happening on Monday around 7.30 p.m. That's where and where uh, deputies responded to that crash between the pickup truck and the motorcycle happening near Loop 1604 and Highway 281. That man has since been arrested. You can take a look at him on your screen right now. That is 37-year-old Federico Chavez. Now, police tell us that on Monday, uh, the pickup truck struck the motorcyclist, throwing him to the ground and running over the motorcycle. The man on the bike was taken to a nearby hospital with major injuries where he later died. The victim has been identified as 58-year-old Louis Earl Fender. Now, during the investigation, deputies say they found that Chavez was the driver of the pickup truck and had been driving recklessly. Witnesses reporting Chavez had been passing vehicles in a no-passing zone, driving fast beyond the speed limit, as well as tailgating the motorcycle. We've learned investigators found open alcohol containers inside the truck. Now, Stephanie, the driver of that pickup, again, has been arrested for manslaughter, a second-degree felony. He is being held at the Bear County Jail on a $100,000 bond. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Right now, the search on for a wanted fugitive. They're looking for 29-year-old Mark McPherson. Take a look. He has a series of warrants for his arrest, including two charges of unauthorized use of a motor vehicle as well as theft. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And the Bear County Sheriff's Office is searching for a 13-year-old girl who disappeared Sunday here in San Antonio near the medical center. Alina Santiago was last seen at a Starbucks in the medical center, and she has a heart-shaped tattoo on the top of her left hand, and we are told she may be carrying a black backpack. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office at number 335-6000. You can also send an email to missingpersons at bear.org. 
As parents picked up their kids from school in New Valley yesterday, there was some anxiety and nervousness. This morning, the district says they had almost 89% of their anticipated enrollment on the first day of school. Now, last year, there was almost 86% of the anticipated enrollment on the first day. The kids, however, were all smiles as they walked out of Uvalde Elementary. And we did see a large presence of DPS officers at the school Monday for training. And on Tuesday, those officers were patrolling and standing by the gates. There were mixed emotions from parents about the DPS presence. She, well, we were watching the news earlier and she was, it said 33 state troopers and she was a little bit more happy with that, you know, and uh, especially with the fencing and everything going on here. As parents, that helps us out too. You can try to have all the protection you want, but when it boils down to it, you never know how you're going to react to a situation. All this comes as DPS announced that five troopers who are at Robb Elementary May 24th are being investigated by the Texas Inspector General's Office for their actions that day. Two are on leave with pay pending the results of the investigation. The DPS is not releasing their names. And right now on our website, students around San Antonio wore maroon to show their support for the Uvalde community. Now, students of all ages took part from elementary age to college. We have pictures from all over, and you can see them right now on our website at KSAT.com. Just look for the story on the homepage. In your morning headlines, former Trump advisor Steve Bannon expected to surrender tomorrow on charges related to his fundraising effort to build a border wall. Just before Trump left office, he pardoned Bannon on federal fraud charges related to the alleged scheme, but presidential pardons do not apply to state and local investigations. Bannon called the indictment, quote, phony charges. Meanwhile, there's a new development in the investigation into documents seized at former President Trump's Florida home. The Washington Post reports material found at Mar-a-Lago includes information related to nuclear capabilities. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more. This morning, new fallout from the classified material allegedly found at former President Trump's Florida residence. The Washington Post reports a document FBI agents seized at Mar-a-Lago describes a foreign government's military defenses and nuclear capabilities. The Post adding some of the seized documents detail top secret U.S. operations so closely guarded that many senior national security officials are kept in the dark about them. It comes as the Justice Department and former President Trump's legal team face a new deadline. A judge has given them until Friday to submit a list of potential candidates who could be a so-called special master in the case, an independent party who will review the documents. Bill Barr, who served as Trump's attorney general, says the judge's ruling granting a special master was wrong. He says the Justice Department should appeal. I don't think the appointment of a special uh, master is going to hold up. I don't think it changes the ball game so much as maybe we'll have a rain, uh, rain delay for a couple mm. of innings. Meanwhile, a major development in the investigation into the alleged effort by Trump supporters to overturn the 2020 election results in Georgia, where authorities are looking into the breach of voting data in rural Coffee County. Investigators say this surveillance video shows a local Republican Party leader escorting two operatives reportedly working for Trump's attorney into the county's election offices. The video is from January 7, 2021, the same day authorities say the office's voting machines were breached. The woman escorting those men has been identified as the former Republican chairwoman of Coffee County, Kathy Latham, who's under criminal investigation. She's accused of submitting false certifications, declaring Trump the winner in Georgia. Latham's lawyers responding to the video, saying Latham would not and has not knowingly been involved in any impropriety in any election. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. An American tourist on a cruise to the Bahamas has been killed by a shark. The 58-year-old woman from Pennsylvania was on a cruise and took an independent snorkeling excursion with her family on Tuesday when authorities say she was attacked by a bull shark. Family members along with operators from the boating company was able to rescue the female, brought her on board the tour company boat and brought her here to the Monarch View Ramp. The woman died before she made it to the hospital. Her family was also snorkeling with her at the time, but no one else was injured. 612, about 75 degrees. And still to come, attorneys for Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes are asking for a new trial based on what they say is new evidence. That's ahead in your GMA first look. Plus lots and lots of people heading to a big concert downtown tonight. After the break, what it means for drivers.
and taking a look outside with live cam. Kind of cloudy this morning. We have a shot of rain today, but after that, it's going to heat up. We'll be right back. We are at 16 minutes past the hour. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos to see how your roads are looking. It's been pretty quiet right now. I think we're first going to start with a look at traffic. There you can see at 37 at Carolina <laughs> near the Alamo Stadium or uh, we our Alamo Dome. Pardon me. We do have uh, traffic that's already picking up out there. But as we get a quick look around town, there's really nothing else that's really showing up on our map that would slow anybody down. But we know that there's going to be a lot to talk about here with 37 near the Alamo Dome because of that Bad Bunny concert taking place a little bit later tonight. So we're going to get to that in just a moment. But first, let's start here with a look at the map. Just a lot of green on the screen still pretty quiet right now if you do have to get your day started early, but uh, just always be on the lookout. We know that there's some active construction and thankfully the morning stayed pretty quiet, so we've been able to talk about that a little bit more. But as I mentioned here at 37 at Carolina, we do have that Bad Bunny concert taking place a little bit later tonight, and I believe we have a story that we want to tell you about because we know nearby businesses are preparing and hopeful to cash in and those who live near the dome or work in the area are trying to prepare for a lot of that extra traffic uh, that's going to be taken taking place today. Concert goers will be trying to get to the Alamo Dome right in the middle of rush hour traffic. It's going to be busy, guys. The event will have a pre party at HB Plaza starting at three this afternoon and doors will open early at 530 and Bad Bunny is expected to take the stage around 7 p.m. in front of 54,000 people. San Antonio is going to be the center of the concert universe, and so we're encouraging everybody to get downtown as early as you can. Richard Oliver with the Alamo Dome does say VIA is trying to help ease some of the potential congestion. They'll have additional bus services that will be available from the AT&T Center or Crossroads Park and Ride to help bring in the crowd. So hopefully that will ease some of the traffic that will be seen out there. But the services do start at 5 in the afternoon and a one way ride to the concert is $1.30. There and back is $2.60. So just make sure to plan your commute ahead of time. We know that it's going to be a pretty busy time for anybody that's trying to make their way to uh, the Alamo Dome, but uh, hopefully they can also enjoy the experience. 54,000 people Man. is a, a, essentially a small town. That's like a Spurs playoff crowd back in the uh, back of the day. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's going to be busy, guys. And like you said, right in the middle of rush hour traffic. Oh, yes. yeah. That's true in the middle of the week because uh, I was there on the Alamo Dome on Saturday with the UTSA game, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, pretty packed then. I mean, parking was crazy, drop off was crazy. So I can imagine during the week, like you uh, said. My goodness. Yeah, park and ride, like you said, sounds like yeah. a really good <laughs> idea. So, all right, as the buses get rolling this morning, temperatures are in the low to mid 70s around much of the area. We may drop another couple of degrees here in town with a lot of clouds hanging around here and then sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. And we do have some scattered storms that are going to be popping up later on today. 30% chance of some rain. So better than the past couple of days, but again, not everybody's going to be seeing rain. 94 for a high temperature today, so we will be just a couple of notches on the uh, the warm side. Oh, darn my good old Wi-Fi in here went out again. Had a really pretty picture to show you. I'll show you that next half hour. And we do have, like I said, a few clouds. Uh, they don't show up too awfully well. In this vantage point looking out there past the airport 410 traffic there is moving along fairly well. Uh, like I said, bottom out 74 degrees and then we'll start to see um, sort of the clouds break up by late morning mixture of sunshine and clouds. We'll get up to 86 degrees at noon and then we start to see the rain chances move on in here and at peak it's going to be 30% chance for again, showers, a couple of thunderstorms, 94 high temperature and then you got to add to that because even though the humidity which is not bad this morning, but we're, of course, in the low to mid 70s. However, when dew points stay in the upper 60s, mid to upper 60s, and you get temperatures in the low to mid 90s, we are going to have somewhat of a heat index to deal with. So it'll feel like we're around 97 here in town, 98 New Braunfels. And we are still looking at some triple digit heat index readings going down 35 in toward Catula. So Yep, it is going to be on the warm side. All those lower temperatures that we've been enjoying even over the weekend and going back into last week, kind of a fond memory as of right now. So by mid afternoon, we start to see a couple of those showers, a couple of thunderstorms popping up here and there. Um, again, most of us won't see rain. If you do, though, could have a you know fairly decent downpour. This is going to last through late afternoon and then going into dinner time and even a couple of more will be popping up as we go on into the uh, the evening hours. Um, this is going to be it, though, as far as rain chances, other than something perhaps along the coast the next couple of days. 
that'll be it. So keep your fingers crossed. You get some rain today. Tropics are starting to become a little bit more active. Anything is more active than when there was nothing throughout the month of August. That is Hurricane Danielle again, continuing off into the North Atlantic. This is Earl. It has become a hurricane. It is forecast to become a major hurricane, a category three storm in the next couple of days, but it will continue to work its way just into the Atlantic Ocean. Obviously, it's going to uh, throw a little bit of extra clouds and uh, some storms on the island of Bermuda. And then a couple of more waves are coming in here, a couple of more spots that uh, the Hurricane Center is watching right off the coast of Africa, but still nothing in the tropics that's going to have any sort of direct impact on our weather. 86 today at noon, call it partly cloudy skies and then high temperature today up to 94 to above normal and some of those scattered showers and a few thunderstorms around here. Like I said, hopefully you get some rain today help with those lawns and everything else because after today pretty much don't have any rain graphics on the uh, and rain symbols on the on the graphic right there and very hot and very sunny. Thank you Mike 622 about 75 degrees and just ahead we are talking sports and how one local volleyball team is making a comeback. 624, we're now roughly one month into the high school volleyball season, and four teams have risen to the top of District 27 5A standings, including a resurgent MacArthur program. Case at 12 Sports, Andrew Seeley was at their match last night and has a recap. Well, MacArthur certainly has something rolling on the volleyball court. The Bramas have ripped off three straight wins since beginning District 27 5A play last week, and that includes Tuesday night's sweep of Edison at home. <laughs> It's just a team effort. We work so hard in the gym. Mac is pretty much just a family thing. And so everyone supports each other. And it just feels good to win with all these girls. The gym was rocking all night long. And the Bramas fed off of the Blue Crew's energy in crucial moments. This just days after the MacArthur football team won their first game in three years. It's clear there's a lot of momentum on campus. Support everywhere. Everybody is so excited. It's it's a lot different than last year. Everybody's more pumped for sports. Everybody's everybody's coming out. That's why our crowd was so big. So we can't wait for the years to come. There are three other undefeated teams in 27-5A play, and two were in action on Tuesday night. Oh! Highlands moved to 4-0 with a convincing sweep of Jefferson. Yeah! And after two straight wins over district opponents, Burbank stepped out of district play to take on Southwest for the second time this season. The Dragons took this one in straight sets, but the Bulldogs will return to district play this Friday, starting a string of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games against Alamo Heights, Highlands, and MacArthur. So we'll see how 27-5A shakes out over the next few weeks. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. And time now, 626 and 75 degrees for now. Ahead in our next half hour, GMSA new details about COVID boosters and why officials want Americans to treat it more like the flu. One woman says she was saved by the smell. Smoke from a fire in her apartment building, she says, is what woke her up. I'll tell you what is next for the people who live here. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. We're outside live of the Alamo Dome where Bad Bunny El Conejo Malo is set to take the stage later today. Coming up on GMSA, we'll talk to you about what you can expect as far as traffic is concerned and how to get here safely. Outside with live cam, waiting for the sun to come up. We're seeing just a hint of it in the distance there. Some morning clouds and mid 70s. And don't forget, it feels like a Tuesday, but it's actually a <laughs> Wednesday. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, September 7th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a good weekend. For some of you, it's a short week and today we get a shot at rain. We do. Mike says we have actually a little bit better chance today than we had yesterday, which is good because yeah. you said everything is Mother Nature going to turn the faucet off. Pretty much so. Okay. So we had, you know, sort of the pattern shift as we got into the, the what, last three weeks basically of August, August. and uh, that included some rain around here. 
then the pattern is going to be shifting back to almost a summary like uh, situation where it's going to be very, you know, pretty much the same thing each and every day. And that includes a lot of sunshine and warmer temperatures. First of all, we'll just concentrate on today. There's some of the clouds there and yeah, maybe a little bit of a uh, hint. The sun wanting to come up, doesn't come up till right around quarter after seven these days, 75 degrees, dew points at 71. So yes, there's humidity, but it's not just oppressively humid by any stretch and the allergens mold is on the high side still, although it did come down from the previous day's reading. Fall elm and grass are both low. Pleasant, we'll call it, you know, glass a little more than half full this morning. We'll call it that. Plenty of clouds hanging around here, and then sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. And yes, we do have those scattered storms. 30% chance for some rain. We've got another disturbance, which is going to be sliding on in here from the north, and they'll start to pop up about mid-afternoon. Mid-90s, so... Despite the fact that we do have a chance for some rain, a couple of extra clouds around here will actually be a degree warmer than yesterday. And then that's going to be the trend throughout the rest of the week. Mostly sunny skies. So after today, we're going to take rain out of the picture. Mid 90s and yeah, it's going to stay hot throughout the weekend with plenty of sunshine around here. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority been uh, fairly quiet on the road, Stephen. Still the case? Yep, quiet for now, Mike, but we know that this is the half hour or so when more people are going to get out there, so we can expect to see that change, especially a little bit later on tonight when people are making their way down to the Alamo Dome for the Bad Bunny concert, but right now, things are looking good. Alright, 410 at McCullough, you can see that traffic's already picking up, but taking it to the map, there's really not a lot to show you out there, and that has been the trend of the morning. Lots of green on the screen. We do see a stalled vehicle up along 35. If you are traveling up to or a little bit above Live Oak, you can expect to see a stalled vehicle, so make sure to move over or slow down. Also, in Helotus does look like we are seeing some slow moving traffic over off 1604 in the northwest side, but it has been a pretty quiet start to this morning as we take one last look here at 410 Fredericksburg. There at McCullough, it is getting busier, and by the time morning rush does get here, it's going to be a lot more busy, so just make sure to watch out for other drivers, and we're going to have more updates here on GMSA. Mark's up. Thank you, Stephen. Home will be wherever the heart is for more than half a dozen Northside families. Their apartments now off limits due to an overnight fire broke out just before midnight at a complex on Jackson Keller near West Avenue. Katrina Weber is there live. Any word yet on how this fire started, Katrina? No, not just yet. Neither firefighters nor the woman who lives in the apartment where the fire started know exactly how it started just yet. Uh, but they do know the damage that that fire caused, though. Seven of the eight units have damage from the fire, smoke or water. One neighbor told me that fire crews got here quickly and got to work putting out the flames, which had swept over one side of this building. But everyone who lives here got out safely. The woman in the apartment where it started, though, told me her smoke detectors were not working. She says luckily the smell of smoke woke her up. Although she and her family escaped, she says their pet cat did not make it out alive. Now, we are not sure just yet where those families that were displaced will end up, but we do know that the uh, volunteers with the American Red Cross were here earlier this morning, helping at least some of them to find a place to stay, at least for now. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman is in the hospital after she was shot in the chest overnight. This happened just before 1 a.m. in the 3400 block of East South Cross. Now, investigators say it started as a domestic dispute that escalated into a shooting. Police say the suspect got away from the scene. No official word on the woman's condition. The Kamal Independent School District is still investigating after Canyon High School students allegedly made highly inappropriate and demeaning racial comments during a volleyball game last Friday night. Now the Hayes Hawks volleyball team is responding on Facebook. Team posting in part last Friday was not just an instance of kids being kids. It's an example of blatant racism and any who sat by or sits by and allows it to happen is equally as responsible as the students that use the inappropriate language to begin with. United Together, Hayes Hawk Football. CISD Acting Superintendent has said those responsible will be disciplined to the fullest extent possible. And Governor Greg Abbott has received an award for expanding Internet access across the state. He met with local business leaders yesterday in Laredo. During that visit, he was awarded the Broadband Trailblazer Award by Texas Broadband Now. The group says Abbott is committed to ensuring all Texans get access to high-speed and reliable Internet. He also spoke about protocols that were not followed in the Uvalde school shooting. We wanted to ensure that in Uvalde, 
as well as across the entire state. We were going to have our schools as safe as possible uh, when they opened for their students to return. Uh, and so I issued directives to the Texas Education Agency as well as other state agencies uh, to conduct inspections all summer long to make sure that the best safety measures are being used. And Abbott went on to say that at the request of the mayor in Uvalde, he directed the Texas Department of Public Safety to deploy DPS troopers to all the schools in Uvalde to make sure that not only were they safe, but also the people attending those schools would be safe. The new COVID boosters are rolling out. And there has been an uptick in pediatric COVID cases and health officials are signaling that COVID shots could become an annual experience just like flu shots. Here's ABC's Jay O'Brien with details. This morning, the White House urging anyone over the age of 12 who's already been vaccinated for COVID to go out and get boosted again. The new Pfizer booster is cleared for anyone over 12 and Moderna's for anyone over 18 and two months out from their last shot. The boosters target the highly contagious BA4 and BA5 Omicron subvariants, getting the final green light from the CDC and FDA last week. This website, vaccines.gov, now live with locations Americans can get the new boosters. As of this past Friday, they started arriving. And by the end of this week, over 90% of Americans will live within five miles of these new updated vaccines. The rollout comes as an average 400 Americans still die every day from COVID. And with schools back in session, pediatric COVID cases are back on the rise, up more than 90,000 reported cases last week compared to just less than 80,000 two weeks before, according to a new report from the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Children's Hospital Association. But nationally, COVID cases are plateauing, while the White House is signaling a new reality in the fight against the virus, the likelihood of annual COVID vaccines, just like flu shots. Barring those variant curveballs, for a large majority of Americans, we are moving to a point where a single annual COVID shot should provide a high degree of protection against serious illness all year. Health officials urging anyone who gets the new COVID booster to consider getting a flu shot as well at the same time. All of this comes as the White House is asking Congress for an additional $22 billion to buy more vaccines, COVID treatments, and PPE. It's tied up in a larger $47 billion funding request that also addresses monkeypox and military equipment for Ukraine. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 638, 74 degrees. And after the break, we are going inside and outside to a unique school and the new approach to learning. This is the moment for a treatment for moderate to severe eczema. Sabinko, FDA approved. 100% steroid free, not an injection. Sabinko is a once daily pill for adults who didn't respond to previous treatments. And Sabinko helps provide clearer skin and less itch. Sabinko can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms, or are prone to infections. Do not take with medicines that prevent blood clots, serious, sometimes fatal infections, lymphoma, lung, skin, and other cancers, serious heart-related events, and blood clots can happen. People 50 and older with heart disease risk factors have an increased risk of serious heart-related events or death with jack inhibitors. This is the moment, but we've only just begun. Speak with your doctor about Sabinko today. An innovation from Pfizer. 643, homeschooling, charter schools, public, private, whatever you want your child to learn and however you want them to learn, there seems to be a place for everyone. And our Sarah Costa shows us how one woman created a new kind of school. This is not recess, but an actual part of the curriculum at Kekade Freedom School. Its roots are based on liberation and wisdom through play. Because we can climb, and inside we can't really climb anything. And then when we're outside, there's more things to do than when we're inside. For me, a huge part of what it means to decolonize childhood, to liberate kids through play, is to like let black and brown kids play. Nola Akinde founded the homeschool co-op for preschoolers through fifth grade. With a background in early childhood education, she believes the system is fundamentally flawed 
and says by decolonizing the way we are forced to learn and educate takes us back to a time when test scores were not the most important part of a child's education. Two more minutes to project! Essential principles include liberation through play, learning through play, access to thoughtful, curated learning environments, and access to materials. Day after unrelenting day, sunshine beat down. Subjects like math and science are taught in non-traditional ways. You will use your eyes to observe. There are also lessons about leaves and trees. And we're going to tag the trees with like their scientific names and their common names. Nola wanted to create a joyful place for kids to learn about bias while exploring and celebrating their diversity. Our kids are going to have new solutions that we couldn't even have dreamed of. Their goal is that when students move on to middle school, they have a deep understanding of who they are, what interests them, and how to express themselves. Now, tuition for the school is suggested at $1,100 a month, but families can pay what they can afford. They also offer a homeschool curriculum. I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. 645. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. It looks a little crowded there at I-35 in Alamo. Yeah, uh, right now we're not sure exactly what is going on out there, but we can tell you that it is a place where we're going to see that back-to-back -back traffic at this hour. 35 at Alamo. Texas has not reported this as an incident just yet, but we do know uh, we are seeing those flashing lights out there, and you have to watch out carefully because we are seeing a lot more traffic, especially as people are making their way into the Alamo City for work or just to get their day started a little bit early. But we take you to the map. Again, nothing really to show you out there. Of course, we do have those slowdowns that we've been talking about throughout the morning. And as we see there, uh, there it does look like we're seeing it along US 90 in the far west side of Bear County. If folks are traveling in to uh, to the Alamo City from Castorville. But, you know, as I mentioned, it's been pretty quiet throughout the morning. We really haven't seen a whole lot else out there that would cause any real concern. But of course, we want to make sure that you plan your commute ahead of time. But we take it back here to Transguide, back to 37 in Carolina, shot of the Alamo Dome. It's pretty quiet right now, but we do do want to talk to our Jonathan Cotto, who was also a Bad Bunny fan. Jonathan, what is your favorite song and what can we expect a little bit later? Hey, Steven, thank you. My favorite song is Titi Te Pregunto by Bad Bunny. And of course, in that song, he mentions San Antonio. So we know the crowd is going to go wild when they hear that part in that song. But let me talk to you about uh, where I'm at right now. I've been here since 4.30 a.m. here at the Alamo Dome, and it's been quite the scene. Very busy with staff getting ready for this concert. We know Bad Bunny is set to take the stage later tonight. But right now in this parking lot, there's over a dozen semi with staging equipment, audio equipment, all that st music equipment for this concert. Security has been here early. They're telling us you're going to want to get here early. But listen, it's not just the fans and at the Alamo preparing. Businesses are also preparing, hopefully uh, wanting to cash in on this hype as well. And those who live near the dome or work on the area trying to prepare for midweek traffic, plus concert goers congesting traffic. Now, the event will have a pre-party at HEB Plaza. Doors will open early at 5.30 and Bad Bunny is expected to take the stage around 7 p.m. in front of 54,000 people. Now, VIA is trying to help ease some of the potential congestion. They'll have additional bus services that will be available from the AT&T Center or Crossroads Park and Ride to help bring in the crowd. Now, the services start at 5 p.m. and a one-way ride to the concert is only $1.30. There and back is $2.60. It's all in an effort to help alleviate some of the backup that's expected. Now, uh, we know here in speaking with some of the security here at the Alamo Dome, they're telling us get here early. Don't wait till the last minute. You will be stuck in traffic. And of course, folks, if you're planning on coming out to the Bad Bunny, uh, just plan accordingly. Get home safe after the concert. Reporting live outside of the Alamo Dome, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you, Jonathan. Yeah. It's going to be pretty crowded. They're quiet me, right now. Now, one thing as you head on down to uh, the concert or after school, drive home, may run into a, a couple of showers here or there. Oh, so yeah. you, you said just, it's uh, possible. Some, yeah, something to keep in mind. So that may, uh, with all that, all those people going down there and rush hour traffic may slow things down even more so. Gorgeous, gorgeous picture. I mean, yeah, basically a beautiful painting. And then transition into this picture, which is pretty darn nice as well. Still a few clouds <laughs> hanging around here. Sun's going to be coming up in about uh, 25 minutes or so, right around quarter after seven. All right, let's jump way ahead into the future, into next week. And this is from the Climate Prediction Center. This is not temperatures, but just leaning 
one way or the other. 50-50 uh, chance would be this gray area of having normal temperatures, so slightly leaning toward above normal temperatures going into next week. That would be the 13th through the 17th. And then as far as precipitation, it would be leaning toward the dry side into next week. Now, further into the future, the 15th through the 21st, a better or better odds of being on the above normal side and then also about a 50 50 shot and even kind of on the dry side up there. So uh, it's not looking promising as far as any good fallish weather or a lot of rain as we go into next week and even beyond that. This morning we'll bottom out at 74 degrees. Got a mixture of sunshine and clouds out there as of right now and that'll be the case throughout late morning 86 at noon and then early afternoon we start to get into that very small chance for a couple of showers or Thunderstorm moving on through here. 94 high temperature today, 30% chance for some rain. So not a great shot, but better than what we've had the past couple of days around here. And as you can see on the computer model by mid afternoon, we start to see a couple of these popping up here and there. Still could have a couple of decent downpours associated with any of these storms as well. This is going to be the case through late afternoon and then going in toward dinner time and even into early evening may have a couple of uh, little stragglers kind of moving on in through portions of the hill country. And then, like I said, after that, that's pretty much it because that high is going to really start to take over on the front side of it and in conjunction with that low, which is just not a good spot to give us a bunch of rain. This is what's taking those little disturbances and throwing them in here from the north. We're also getting a few clouds uh, that are from that hurricane over there right off the Baja of California, but that's not going to have any other direct impact on us because the high is going to sort of keep it pushed off there to the west. But that high pretty much takes over going into next uh, or going into this coming weekend, I should say, as well as going into next Next week, big low, very fallish type pattern up there on the Great Lakes, but nothing for us. It may try and um, throw a, a front in the vicinity by the first part of next week. It would be something dry and not really do much at all to affect our temperatures. 86 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperatures going to make it up to 94. A few scattered showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon. And after that, other than maybe a little, you know, sea breeze shower, Along the coast, nothing but uh, hot temperatures. Three, four degrees above normal, mid 90s, plenty of sunshine. Kinda well, it's it like a summer kind of pattern. Including today, it was nice while it lasted. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for the, you know, this is the seventh month of September. We've had nine tenths of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport, and a lot of folks had a lot more. August was gentle to us. Yes, it was much needed. Nice change of pace. 651, 74 degrees. And the high school football season already ramping up with the beginning of district play. Tomorrow on GMSA, a preview of the three best games you can stream on the BGC app this Friday night. As we go to commercial break, one more look outside with live cam. It's a beautiful start to your Wednesday. Glad you're with us. We'll wrap things up after this. Still keeping an eye on this incident at 655 35 at Alamo. If you're driving through the area, you'll likely see those flashing lights out there along with traffic that's already building up. Not sure exactly what's been reported out there, but we do see those flashing lights off in the distance. We'll have to check in with our friends at Transguide to find out exactly what is going to be causing that issue. But right now we are seeing those slowdowns picking up usual trouble spots. 90, 35, 410, as well as 151. Watch out and drive safely, Mike. Got some clouds this morning and uh, humidity is not bad. 75 degrees right now. Here in town, comfort at 69, partly cloudy at noon, 94 high temperature today, a couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms. Hopefully you get some rain today because after that, it's just going to be hot and sunny the rest of the week in through the weekend. All right. Well, fingers crossed for now. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mike. Look for updates from these guys coming up throughout Good Morning America, which is coming up next. And thanks for joining us and we'll see you back here at nine. Have a great day, everybody.